Hello, good evening, I'm Oral Gibbs, and welcome to Oral Gibbs Live. Coming to you live here from World Star Studios at Amsterdam Shopping Center. And tonight, well, we have a full house with some very interesting young people right in the program now. We have on your left of your screen, Miss Anissa Dacob, right? Yes. <laughs> welcome to the program. Thank you. And we also have Mr. Ralph Kantav. Well, thank you. You're no stranger here. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Ms. Marjorie Ramirez. Yes, that's correct. So I want to <coughs> welcome all three of you this evening here to uh, Oral Gibbs Live. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Well, it's good to have you all here because, you know, I had uh, Mr. Kantav and Ms. Uh, Ramirez on Speaking of Everything back in 2015. And I invited them back. I invited them back, and uh, they were to France, right? Yes. yes. Going to France, but one person wasn't here. And that was Stakeup. You yeah, also yes. went to France. Yes, I did. All right. So, what? How was the experience for you? Um, it was a really nice experience. I had a good time. Over 400 young um, representatives came to France to represent their country to talk about different issues, and in a way. We all really had similar issues um, that we face in our home country regarding sustainability, um, and um, it was it was great to see actually. So, so you you enjoyed it? Yes, I did. We enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you're you're back home and all of you here, <coughs> the chance to reflect about 2015. How you all feel about things in the future, Sir Martin? Are you optimistic? <laughs> that was one of the questions at UNESCO too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go Who's going to take that one for us? Ladies, Ramirez. 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 <laughs> optimistic. Um, optimistic about what exactly? Future where things are going in Saint Martin. I I really don't know if I want to be optimistic about that because I find that there's a lot that's going on in our island at the time. And I think that we really need to focus on what is essential first. And then maybe then I'd be optimistic. Mm. And, and, and when you say essential, what do you think as a young person that is most essential to you and your friends and other young people? I think to us young individuals, what's essential is being able to live and being able to enjoy all those things that young people like ourselves would want to enjoy while we're living here on our island that we call St. Martin. Mm. Mm. Well, Go ahead. <laughs> well, um, I'm, I'm optimistic, yes. Uh, I would say so because <coughs> at the end of the day, uh, we have to, at the end of the day, um, all we have left is ourselves and we will thrive eventually. Mm. But um, as Margie mentioned, you know, things are really tough right now and it's like, you know, you, you feel gloomy about the future of the island, but based on, you know, looking at our generation, for example, I'm mm. confident that things will improve once, you know, we get to establish ourselves. But there are a lot of challenges that we face, so once we overcome that, you know, we will make yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. And Ms. Dago, for you? Um, I think sometimes people feel a little hopeless um, when they see the situation that St. Martin is in right now, and they probably wish it was better. But like Ralph said, I have a lot of faith in the younger generation. If we are given the chance really to, you know, try and make a change and um, longevity wise, create a sustainable living for ourselves, education wise, and, and just kind of build St. Martin to where we think it should be. Now, so. all three of you are not 30 years yet, right? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's fine. laughs> you know the, Somewhat, yes. You know the saying, never trust anyone over 30. You ever heard that saying? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, that goes back to America back in the 60s. They didn't trust anyone over 30. But the thing is that um, you all have a great future ahead of you mm -hmm. if things are done the right way. Are you all concerned about the way, you see, because the reason I say this is I look back at the Netherlands and Tilly's, and I look back at the years when I was um, your, your ages, and I was doing television. I started my, my recorded television program 
back in 1984. I started this live show in 1989, and I played a very crucial role in politics and in information <coughs> to the public, etc. I saw what happened in the Netherlands Antilles. I saw the debt go from two billion to five billion killers. Right. I saw uh, there was a time when they had a crisis levy that 10% of your salary had to go to the government and the private sector in St. Martin had to pay that at the time I was working at Muller Bay and the government of St. Martin refused to do that so the civil servants of St. Martin never paid that 10% levy and then I was very optimistic because I thought well you know we would get out of the problem mm -hmm. and we basically never did it just got more and more and now we are St. Martin out of the Nelson Tillies but in the kingdom of the Netherlands and I'm hearing about 200 million killers <laughs> and counting and more and more. So I, I'm a little worried. I don't want to be, I don't, don't want to uh, kill your spirits mm -hmm. and, and depress you here. Mm -hmm. But what I saw in the last 30 years, I didn't expect it. I really expected by now we'll have a better. And better, yeah. No, we don't have it. Yeah. Well, and, um, at the end, apart from us as a society, you know, looking at the leadership of the country, I think that's, that's well, that's not where it starts, but I think that's, a, in, a, in a way, kind of the root of the problem. Yeah. Because once again, uh, you still have um, so-called leaders, mm -hmm. you know, who are currently in mm -hmm. leadership positions right now that are either are springs or were there, mm -hmm. you know, during the times that you were, exactly. you know, you were yeah. doing your show and so mm -hmm. forth. Yeah. And so once we have a, you know, yeah, although we can't have young blood, but you know, young blood that are in leadership positions that are there to um, guide them onto a different mm -hmm. um, nouveau, so to speak, mm -hmm. then, you know, things will gradually change. Uh, I mean, I, I think that you need a combination of both, you know, old and young. Yeah. You know, young comes with fresh ideas and... and, and um, the old comes with wisdom. Yeah, the old comes with experience. wisdom. But if yeah. this is the reality that St. Martin is faced with, I don't, I don't think people see it as urgent. It, it needs to be seen as urgent because it is urgent. And if it is that we are two million gillers deficit, two hundred two hundred million gillers mm -hmm. deficit, then but no, it's an it's not urgent. Really a deficit. It's just that that that's, there's a, a debt that's there right now. Exactly. Part of it is the AP and um, the pension. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. So yeah, yeah. 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 But I don't think people see the urgency and uh, and uh, and we need to bring that across and people need they need that information and they need to know that you know we're really in a financial situation where yeah. something needs to be done and what's important too is that uh, <coughs> us as a society you know at the end of the day too our society has changed a lot from you know how it was in your times to now and it is important especially for young people to be the ones mm -hmm. to decide well you know despite all what's going on we're going to make a difference because every small and you know, every every input you make it, it, it gradually um, changed our society yeah. in general. Well, you know, nothing really has changed. And the reason why I say that mm -hmm. is when I returned to St. Martin from studying in the United States of America in 1983, and I started, I had great ideas, and met with, with a lot of resistance. And today I'm still doing these shows. But we didn't have social media. We didn't have mm -hmm. Facebook. We didn't have Twitter. We didn't have these kind of things. Mm -hmm. So. Information was different then and now. Mm -hmm. So I, I look at, at the young people today, they have so much <coughs> going for them. This is the best time You're right. to be alive. This is the best time to be young. Mm -hmm. And I want, and then sometimes I look at the young people, I think they, they're really throwing it away. Yeah. They're not really using it the way it could be used. Yeah. But you know that you can, have, you can have everything, but if you don't know how to use it, then you can't make it work for you. Because the mass media is there, we have all kind of social sites that we can use in our favor. But a lot of our young students, our young children don't use it for that purpose. They use it in a negative way. So the availability and everything else can be there for you. But if you don't know how to use it, mm -hmm. then it will never work for you. Because you have more, but still they're, yeah. they're, they're still not so limited. So it's so limited. Yeah. yeah. And then so. it goes to uh, education. And exactly. Yes. Yes. They don't understand how important it is because actually what we have now is a way to share information, real-time information, like what's happening now to connect instant. us. Instant. Yes. To yes. connect yes. us. Instantly. So, I mean, is 
right in our and fingertips. When you, so when you look at the news, you know, in other areas, say like China, for example, mm -hmm. where they're using you know social media and technology mm -hmm. and you know um, social media in general to yeah. like cause a revolution, yeah, basically exactly. yeah. Yeah. change the society. Because right? I mean, re revolution. Some people might think is with blood, war and bloodshed, but I mean, a revolution. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. just a complete overturn of something. Yes. But, yeah. but let me ask this. Do you have friends that don't know the name of the Prime Minister of St. Martin? Well, <laughs> no. Uh, no. I think most of my friends know. Yeah. Well, because he's always been there, people know him. But yeah. I do have friends who, who can't name all 50 members of parliament. parliament. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely true. Because they're constantly changing. And sometimes me, as a school teacher, mm -hmm. you're faced with, OK, I'm teaching my kids the names mm -hmm. of these 15 persons today. Mm -hmm. And then tomorrow, and I'm pretty sure they know the name, your kids know the name of the President of the United States versus yes. who the Prime Minister of St. Martin yeah. is. is. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And that's a big shame for that's us. a big shame, yeah. So, <coughs> for, for young people like you all and your friends, right, what's, what's the most important thing right now for young people in St. Martin? I think is being able to survive. Honestly, because when I look at a lot of young persons, not necessarily my age, because I am affiliated with persons who are a bit older than myself, yeah. and it's always um, a question of when can I purchase land or when would I be able to buy a house. And these are things that right now on this island for a lot of young people, it's like unobtainable. Mm -hmm. Because it's ridiculous, the cost of land, the cost of being able to yeah. purchase a home, to even qualify for a mortgage. Uh -huh. It's like you might have to move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Can and you imagine? Also, it goes to, like, I'm a bit younger than uh -huh. Anissa. Like You're younger than two, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the main issues is, you know, finding a job, a decent job, a meaningful mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. And then even... Going to, going to um, in quality internet mm -hmm. service. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 yes, exactly. Yes. And it is really important. Yeah. So good you, you mentioned that. Yeah. And I've, I've actually seen a lot, a lot of young, ambitious um, um, St. Martiners, like mm -hmm. myself, for example, and other friends that come back to the island and they, you know, they're excited to want to actually give back to a place that created them and made them who they are. And then mm -hmm. they're, they're just, it's like running into a, a, a rock wall and, and, and they lose hope and, and they, they come with so much ideas and they're so excited to want to give mm -hmm. back and just they're met with a lot of resistance, like you say, from the system that we, we created. We kind of, we don't really open up our arms so friendly to our own people. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, that needs, when I hope for better St. Martin, I, I hope for that. That you, you know, we open our people up with, with big arms and we, you know. Possibilities. And possibilities. Well, this is the, this is the land of opportunity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. really. St. Martin is, after the United States of America, right now, today, this <coughs> is the land of opportunity. That's this is the good. best place you can be as a young person. Yeah. The problem is how you're going to deal with it. And yeah. yeah, and opportunity-wise, especially as a developing young person, mm -hmm. Um, sports, for example, being I think mm -hmm. something we put in the back burner. Sports yeah. and the arts. Yes, you know? yeah. yes, definitely. Um, the amount of people I knew, like growing up in high school, that okay, fine, maybe weren't great in school, but they could run very yeah. fast mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. forth. But mm -hmm. there's no yeah. hope for them in, in that. And then, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to the arts, I mean, mm -hmm. we'd be more willing to finance and support a young person in sports. But if it's to dance, yeah. say. Um, creative designer or Singing, anything, yeah. that's a no. And yeah. I always believe in a, a balanced society. Yeah. So you mm -hmm. do need doctors, you need lawyers, you need teachers, but you also need people who are focused in the arts because not everybody at the end of the day is reality. Not everybody is good in academics. Some are, you know, have that special talent and that that is what creates a balanced society at the end yeah. of the day. So we can't put stuff like that on the back burner, especially as a developing country. Mm -hmm. you, you need those expertise here too. Definitely. And I would like to mention, I know maybe all of us here know Denzel Richardson. Mm -hmm. yes. I went to school with Denzel. Yes. So I knew he wasn't the best in academics, but he loved his Sport, baseball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he was good at it from back in high school. Mm -hmm. And it was never, you know, shown out. So that's one of the reasons why whenever I am traveling on the front side, I love to see how they 
bring up that girl, the Carty girl, the runner. The gym, yeah. But it's not something that we did back when I was going to school in our society. And now to see how big Denzel has become. Yeah, now everyone so knows cool. Denzel. So for me, it's like, like Anissa mentioned, mm -hmm. It's not just about the academics. People, mm -hmm. there are students who are good in the skills, yeah. and we need to be able to mm -hmm. apply the things that mm -hmm. we have to make these people yeah. flourish. And not and only wait they until do. they get popular, and, yeah. Yeah, and because they're, they're working so, so hard yeah. now to get where they have to go. And we as yeah. St. Martin, once, once you know, he hits the big screen, then is when we'll be like, oh, I know yeah. this guy, he's from St. Martin. No, we have to do it now. <laughs> exactly. Till you're recognized yeah. by someone. Else. But I must commend though that the sports department they did have an uh, event. I think it's called the Brown Pelican. Yeah, yes, where they, yes, they highlighted yes, the awards, a lot of yes. um, a lot of young St. Martiners who were in the and sports previous, yeah. and previous, which is yes, a good thing. Which also, is good. Yeah. Um, so. One of the things we we don't do too, um, societies where um, society wise is that we don't recognize our elders no. and yeah. the contributions that they have made to make St. Martin what it is. Invaluable. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, in, in some ways, I think we are changing and we mm -hmm. are developing in a good way. Mm -hmm. I must speak on behalf of Telem. Mm -hmm. For instance, all of the billboards that they are publishing, oh, right. promoting For the, the, the talent skills of show. Mm -hmm. yeah, these young individuals, which is a good thing because like um, this young girl that studies at Charlotte Brooks and she's a great dancer. And mm -hmm. it's good for us to know that, mm -hmm. hey, we also have yeah. dancers who are talented. Yeah. Like, like look at Nicole the Weaver who, yeah. who made it on Broadway. And I mean, exactly. that's a great and, achievement. And a lot of persons didn't know her until she came about with her project, mm -hmm. yeah. which she's Arts annually, Arts Arts Lives, Lives, yeah. Yeah. which she's an annually giving back dancers, to St. Martin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The opportunity to shine. Yeah. And what's important too is making sure that um, we have the available resource exactly. at the moment. So yeah. for example, the performing art center exactly. yeah you know um, one of the things i always met like i love i love drama mm -hmm. for example you know i'm a writer so you know i'm really <laughs> interested in that and i find that's a very great way of educating people and especially when you're like, showing showcasing your culture mm -hmm. and you know if you talk to someone back in the day you, you, you know they'll tell you there was so many different plays i used to be mm -hmm. held on the island but you mm -hmm. rarely see for um, yeah. example, you rarely really yeah. see any mm -hmm. shows being done now. By the cultural And if you don't anymore. have that, you kind of lose the aspect of our cultural heritage, too, because, mm -hmm. you know, it's a place to yeah. portray. I mean, I had dance it too, and, you know, you need those kind of facilities to, to maintain and, 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 and provide for you. provide, you yeah. know, showcase what you've done culture-wise, yeah. traditional-wise. You know, what strikes me is that, and I didn't realize, is that how passionate you all are about mm -hmm. the arts. Because <laughs> if you look at the history of St. Martin, you know, we have always looked at art as something that wasn't important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to be an artist? Your parents would say, no, no. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, you want to be, you know. So listening to you all, you can see that uh, it's important. It is. Yes, and it I'm is. happy to see that you all realize the importance now because mm -hmm. you all now can make a difference. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I love academics, mm -hmm. but um, I love art as well because I realize, you know, that's one of the best ways of um, having people who might not want, who might not be interested in academics. So, you know, yeah, as a medium, hold them in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a medium so to kind of express yourself music, too. Yes, yeah. yes. Poetry yes. and so forth. Dance, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, one of you mentioned early in the beginning about uh, the problems of purchasing having your own home. I thought, yes, Ramirez, I think you, you mentioned yeah. that. Yes, I mentioned that. Is, is that something that is uh, common among young people or just a few you feel yeah. that way? No, it's common. To me, I it's common, say. yeah. So, Most I mean, of a the lot of my people's... friends at this age, you know, you would want to move out to your parents' house mm -hmm. and you would want to start at least trying to own your own home, but, you know, because of the price and mm -hmm. because of how expensive it is and the procedures. The procedures. So, and it. <laughs> <laughs> like and even renting an apartment. And even renting yeah, an apartment. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you just wonder, you know, for other people who say, um, for example, say a single mother with the two kids, with two children, how do, how do they manage it? Yeah, and you have exactly. a lot of cases of that. And mm -hmm. for example, when you speak to teachers, especially, uh, Margie's a teacher, so yeah. she might know, a lot, of, a, a lot of our children, they have, they face great difficulties. Yeah. And so, you know, if, if, your children are facing great difficulties at home. When they come to school, they won't perform to the best ability. Exactly. And then we might consider Thanks. them dummy children. Yeah. 
put them in a, a classify school or them, yeah. In a, a group that they don't belong in, and then mm. eventually that deteriorates our society. Yeah, it's a vicious cycle. Yeah. And Continue. for a community, a society, a country to grow, you can't just focus on one specific thing because you need to be holistic. Mm -hmm. And it, you need to grow in so many different areas mm -hmm. to become a whole that mm -hmm. I think we're, we're, yeah, we're losing focus on what it really is yeah. or what growth really mm -hmm. is all about. Right. And then um, I think our, our sense of identity and really unity bad. as a people, it's, it's not there. Mm. Yeah. Um, we don't like I, to. I think like amongst us, mm -hmm. we, we have it, but um, in general, you know, because a, a few, you know, doesn't make a. I mean, a few makes a great a great difference, but in in that way, it it affects society because, for example, you know, I, I love history, and then I always go back to some in history about how people are so united and so friendly, willing to help each other and go the extra mile to make sure your neighbor is all right. To yeah. make sure. Yeah. You don't see that anymore. Yeah. You don't. You don't see that anymore. You know, what's interesting, too, is that, and, and, uh, and why I ask you all to be here tonight is because you all represent, when people watch the faces, you all represent a new St. Martin. And why I say a new St. Martin, for example, you, uh, Ms. Dekoff, mm -hmm. you are, your father and I went to school together. You come from a well-known family, Dekoff, mm -hmm. right? And um, Mr. Kantav, you are... Uh, I don't know your parents, but you, your parents are originally from, from Haiti, right? Yeah. Right. And um, you, you, are, you went to school, you were born in St. Martin? Yeah, yeah. yeah born in yeah, Martin. Born in Martin. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing is that here you have yourself, uh, you were born here, Haitian parents. We have uh, stake of your father's a St. Martin, mm -hmm. your mother's an American, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have Ramirez, who uh, was do born in the Dominican Republic, Republic right? Yes, and, and both of my parents a, were, are from the Dominican Republic. And you came here as a... Uh, as a young child. I was eight when I came here. And you know, and, and what's, you walk around St. Martin and you ask people, you'll see that just the three of you here alone basically represent what this entire island is today. It's no longer made up of people that are just born in St. Martin right. of St. Martin Prince. So exactly. there's a new St. Martin. Yes. And a, yes. New rea a new reality. Sorry about that. Person. There's a new reality. And I think with this new reality, and help me here if I'm wrong, I get the impression that St. Martin isn't ready for it. Mm -hmm. Do you feel or you think you're ready for that new reality to accept? people like yourselves and I don't know. think we have a choice no I really it don't think it's are. a choice <laughs> and, and it's our reality that we have to face and, and we don't have a choice but to accept it I guess it's the way how we accept it we need to embrace it um, it's becoming part of our culture it is who we are as a people yeah. it is what will identify us as St. Martin yeah. so we can't run from that at the end of the day and as Anissa said we have to embrace it because if we don't embrace it, 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 it affects us because um, if you constantly, like for example, I'm, I was always told, and still up to this day, people tell me, oh yeah, you're from here though. But anyways, um, <laughs> 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 but anyways um, so if you constantly say people like me, mm -hmm. parents are, are from elsewhere, tell them that, yeah, you're not from here, or yeah, you're not from here, so they, will, they, will, they will grow up thinking, well, okay. Right. Well, Develop a certain uh, mindset. Um, and there will be a resistance among. Exactly. Yes. A detachment. Yes. 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 And then that yes. affects us. Exactly. And you yeah. wouldn't want to see a society like that. Which that's actually, segregated. Yeah, and it goes back to what you said earlier in, in the sh earlier about, you know, when back in the day people used to help each other. And when, when you feel detached from one another, you're not yeah. going to be yeah. as generous, yeah, as exactly, kind, exactly. and, you know, which is what we should be as the friendly island. And, and that's why I, I said what I said, because when you speak with other people and, and, and older people, they still can't accept the reality that you all today are part of this country. It's a new country. We got to wake up and understand that it's not a Samaritan of the 60s and the 70s. It's a whole new generation. Well, as, as um, Anissa mentioned, that's, that's who we are and that's our culture because we have to understand is culture never remains the same. It it's constantly dynamic. It constantly evolves, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But um, what, I, what I would say, is, for example, is that what's necessary is that um, Samadhi's history and the traditional culture mm. has to be taught to 
and everyone, everyone in general so when people mm-hmm. come here they should know you know what Sibatin was like back in the days and so forth and then mm-hmm. we build off of that mm-hmm. but you see the thing is to what it is yeah and, and what's interesting here and uh, I might be dead and gone mm-hmm. but this, the new St. Martin will have members of parliament and prime ministers that are not Richardson's or Gums or Gibbs or something like that. You see, yeah. it's, it's going to be a whole bit different. <laughs> yeah, and that may be there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a contab. Yeah, contab. <laughs> yeah. So, and that's why I say, uh, I, I, I want you all to be honest and express mm-hmm. how you feel about the run of the day, how you see things. Mm-hmm. You know, cost of living is a problem, yeah. finding a, a home. Mm-hmm. But when I was a young, guy and I came back from America. I used to drive with my wife. We were living in a one bedroom apartment and we used to drive around at night and look at all these beautiful houses. I used to say to myself and my wife, how oh, people make money to live in this mm, house. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and but then I look back now and I fast forward twenty, <coughs> twenty five years later and I'm hearing you all now saying basically the same thing. <laughs> Gosh, that's a little scary. Yeah. yeah. And um, at the end of the day, to me, it, it all goes to, to leadership. You know, um, who's guiding the country into what, in what direction? Yeah. And um, what are we as a society doing, yeah. you know, to, to you know, um, create that change? Because, for example, when you look at the northern side of the island, where, like, last year when they, when they had, when they, you know, they see blocks, Shut off the entire front side. Yeah. Um, you see that the society, they, they came together and make a difference. Because mm-hmm. um, and I had an interesting discussion in class last semester about you know why, for example, people on the front side will be quicker to come together and make a difference and do something, and we maybe on that lackluster mm-hmm. behavior. Yeah. And the well, theory, so to speak, that we were discussing was that maybe it's because you know on the front side they are more battling with that um, strong colonial influence, you know, with the French, the French government, yeah. mm-hmm. whereas with we, we deal with our own people. people right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's so true. They're our that friends that, that yes. you know. So yes. you're saying somebody you went to school with, yeah. or uncle, or et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, what we have to understand is whether you're foreign or uh, local. Or native. Yeah, whether you're a foreign or a local um, dictator, or whether you're a foreign or um, local, as long as if you're not contributing to the country, mm-hmm. um, we have to get rid of you. Well, <laughs> um, <laughs> that was strong. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. I get it. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, I wonder if young people really follow what's going on politically. Because a lot of people here say, well, it's, yeah. it's politics, and I don't want to be involved. Yeah, but yeah. let me tell you something. You can run from it. It's going to haunt exactly. you. You can't get yeah. away from it. I mean, I, I, I think a lot of people our age have a bad image of what politics is, and so they prefer kind of to put it on the back burner and, and just say that, oh, it's politics. I, I don't want to do it. But like you said, we, we need to face our reality and, and, and really understand what's going on because only when you understand is when you are you can stand up and, and really say, yeah. well, hey, something is something is going on here that shouldn't be. Yeah. And so if you put it on the back burner, how, how will you know? You really need to and open your is, eyes. Everything, everything is political. That will be yeah, everything is yeah. political. Down to the Mai Tai, um, a bottle of water, all that is, politi- all that is yeah, part of entwined, a political yeah. decision yeah. and so forth. And, you know, I think that this form of mentality mm-hmm. in people, not so nonchalant, in young people our age mm-hmm. and a bit older than us, has come in effect because or after 10, 10, 10. Because it's been like a roller coaster of political mm-hmm. influences. Mm-hmm. One day I'm here, the next day I'm not. Mm-hmm. And then exactly. people have become so... Tired. Yeah, tired of it. And they're just not interested. Oh in even paying attention to what is being said anymore. They don't, want, they don't want to keep up with what's going on. They're like, oh, another government fall again. <laughs> yes, that, that's yes. usually what's saying, oh, who is exactly. in, who's in power again? So it's... it's yeah, but, um, but at the end, what we have to realize now mm-hmm. is that we're the generation who is like right there to exactly. take over mm-hmm. and we're the ones going to suffer the most if we don't do something about it. Yeah. And, I, and, look, and, I, and I agree with you all because look, my children are basically the same age that you are. 
you know, and sometimes I, they ask questions. They're in Holland now, but they read the paper and they see what's going on in Simran, and they, they're concerned. They would love to be back in Simran, but mm -hmm. they, when they read what's going on, they don't want to come They're a little hesitant, but I always say this, if this is the place where you were born, mm -hmm. you have a right, and you should come back and help and build your country. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, and I, yeah. Um, there's, you know, short shirt from Antigua. He has, he has a calypso I love a lot that basically says, you know, nobody going to run me, you know, yeah. despite, yeah. <laughs> so, despite whatever, I mean, the opposition, the resistance, and uh, they try to break you down, yeah. but, you know, if you love your country. You, and you and actually, and what I tell, when I, what I tell some of my friends is I'm determined if my neighbor could make a decent living, uh -huh. why can't I? I'm a St. Martiner. I was born and raised just like, some of you know somebody else. I why can't I? And and, and um, you wh where you work now? What's your profession? Uh, Ms. Dacoff? Um Well, currently I work in the cabinet of the Minister of Finance. Okay. Yes, okay. So how long you been uh, in that position now? Um, I've been since for two and a half years okay. now. So I've been with three. Three different governments. Ah. Yes. Wow. And, and, uh, <laughs> and <laughs> second time. Half years. And, the, and you. Um, well, um, I work at um, Sinestra Grey Bay. I'm a night auditor, but I'm also a student. Night auditor? Yeah. So you work from 11 to yes. 7 in the morning? Wow. That's, <laughs> that's <laughs> tough. Hectic that's schedule. tough. Yeah. That's really tough. Well, I have to, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and you're going to school still, too? Yeah. Wow. You remind me of myself, man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Mrs. Ramirez? Yes. <laughs> I'm a school teacher. <laughs> I work at St. Joseph Primary School. Okay, and you you told me you was teaching now for how many years? Um, three years. Three I've been years. teaching for three years. So you see both. So <coughs> there's an average of about two years between all of you in terms of work and everything else. And um, you have any friends that are unemployed? Mm. I have a few. F not really. Uh, like one or two. <laughs> but um. Even uh -huh. with like with, with uh, my friends and other people I know that mm -hmm. that are employed, one of the issues we have here is the working environment. Mm -hmm. Really? Because, um, for example, I mean, like like some of the hotels. Mm. <laughs> no, go ahead. I, they, I know what you're trying to say. <laughs> Don't worry. They are, in my opinion, looking at the uh, history and now, mm -hmm. they are being run like um, plantations. Um, honestly wow. speaking, see, wow. um, honestly speaking, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> give you the, the reference. For example, I, I work in a hotel, okay, and um, like looking at us, how a slave plantation was set up mm. in say 1700s, 1800s, and looking at how it is now, mm. is is literally the same thing, in in a way of, for example, you know, you had absentee ownership, the um, owner of the hotel may not be from here, you know, mm. you may just own it, get money and so forth. Then you you have your your overseer, so that would be like the general manager or the manager, and then you have you know the house negro and the field <laughs> the field negro. So you have we poor slaves, unfortunately, you know, working under tough conditions, and then you have your own people, you know, unfortunately sending you out. And in in many ways, for example, I like the first week when I started, I was like, this is crazy in, in sense like for example how say you are working in the kitchen, you're the chef. But you can't even go home with the food you eat. You understand? You have to yeah. throw it away. That's like I mean, basic. To me, that's yeah. basically saying, well, you're not even worth this to have this food. Mm -hmm. And then, um. Um, with how, for <coughs> example, you know, we, we have this thing. There's a, one of my favorite writers, George Laming, he says, uh, tourism is horrorism. Hmm. <laughs> In the sense that, you know, we kind of sell ourselves and we belittle ourselves to tourism, to the industry, just for the dollar. We are and slaves to tourism, us, basically. As, us as, as a people, especially, we have this inferiority complex in which we allow, um, which we allow ourselves to. Um, we have this inferiority inferiority mm. complex in which, like, we regard the tourists and so forth, like, like God Almighty, yeah, or, yeah. you know, like we put them on such a high pedestal that we that, um, like, from what I've seen and from what I've heard and you know, throughout history on an island and other places. We um, we allow our own people to suffer just to just exactly. to please them. Someone but else but you know what's interesting that. is that um, what you're saying there is that has evolved mm -hmm. because when I was 15 years old, I went to work as a bus boy. I've said mm -hmm. this a million times. I went to work as a bus boy at Mother Bay. I had to go to work because 
My father passed away. My mother could not support the family. By the time I was 17 years old, I was a captain in the restaurant. From 15 to 17, I was a captain. Mm -hmm. I saved my money, went away, came back, went to the same hotel to work as a manager mm -hmm. four years later. And I never experienced what you just mentioned. But what I've noticed over the last 20 plus years when I go back to visit hotels is that you can hardly find a manager, someone in a managerial position that is from St. Martin, because we're no longer good to be managers. We were yes. the leaders in the yeah. industry, but now we're no longer good to be managers. Mm -hmm. We need to so bring someone it, else. Exactly. So you yeah. see what has happened now is that the same industry that we built yeah. is, <laughs> has turned against it's us. us. Yes. Yeah. We're no longer yeah. good yeah. to yeah. do anything else right, but to just right. be a waiter or yeah. a cleaner. Supervisor you know? yeah. the most. Right. You see, so I, I think and that's where the problem is. And that's why I can understand what, you, what mm -hmm. you're saying, Mr. Kantar. And what's important, sorry to cut you off, is, is now, for example, through, through the labor laws, the labor unions and so forth, um, they are there and supposedly to protect the workers, but... Mm -hmm. They're doing the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to, to add to, to what Ralph was saying, just last week I was having a conversation with a friend of mine who was explaining to me that they're bringing persons from overseas to be yeah. trained mm -hmm. by us, the locals. Yeah. Then these persons return back to their homeland, spend a certain amount of time in their home homeland, and then they return back to our island and become our bosses. Yeah. Yeah. And you mm -hmm. just train them. Um, yeah. So it, yeah. it's like, what's really going on and here? What's, what's crazy is uh, for my first job, I used to work in an electronic store, um, uh, Indian store. And what's crazy is the fact that, for example, say an uh, Indian will come to I'm nothing against them, but they're stating facts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Indian will come on an island on a Sunday, and Monday morning they're working. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, exactly. what's going on? Yeah. And then you see your own friends, you tell them, hey, come in and play. They need it, and mm -hmm. then, no. Yeah. Yeah, it takes weeks, it takes <laughs> yep. forever. Yep. Yeah. No, the, the <laughs> your resume is <laughs> thrown in the garbage. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I listened to you all during the break and everything else, and I hear people speak about the huge unemployment among young people that we have something like 30 something percent mm -hmm. of young people unemployed. But let me, yeah. take, let me take this call for you. Uh, Oral gives live on call. Hello? Yes, good night. Good night. I've been listening and following your program attentively. Thank you. I don't know um, these people you said are in their 30s. No, 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 they're not in their 30s, they're young, <laughs> young, young professionals, but they're not in their 30s, they're in their 20s. Okay, but I want to know where were they when Hurricane Lois hit this country? Here. Yeah. I was here. When I, just I wasn't here. Yeah. I was five. <laughs> I, I was 95, five too, so but well, I wasn't here. No, no, they were not here. Um, I was here. You, I was born here and raised. Yeah, and you were? Oh. I was four. Four? Okay. Yeah. I was a few months. Okay, and you I probably was four or five. Yeah. So, what's the question, ma'am? You know, because um, I was not here when Hurricane Lewis hit St. Martin. But I understand that there was a lot of shacks in the hills in St. Martin. So, I, don't, I want these young people to understand that St. Martin is not the St. Martin we believe it is. We have the idea that we are living in paradise. But that you will hear when Hurricane Lewis hit, people will realize that maybe we were living in Haiti and not in maybe so called and Antilles that have such a high standard of living. I, I believe a lot of people have a misconception. You, you think, do you think these young people here today, they're power? I think they're living, I think they're living in, 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 a, in, in they're saying, cloud nine. I, I respectfully disagree with you, ma'am. I, I think I, in fact, I admire the way they think and how they view. I think they're being realistic. I, I don't see. Realistic? Yeah. Listen, you can fool the people some of the time, but they cannot fool it all the time. Let me fool all right? Yeah, but. When I came to St. Martin, I even dumped in a black on the water, and I saw poverty. I am not going to lie. I saw Look, poverty. And I've, I've been here. I'm yeah. not a not a thing, not a no. What shock? What shock? Do you understand? I understand. And you know, I don't like to fool people. You know, the reason why I couldn't get the government over, I'll tell you the truth. I do not have, I do not have a clear skin. I do not 
have truth news. I am not the typical person who looks like they appear to be in government. <laughs> but I know that I am somebody. Because the Holy Book tells me I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Ah, God and I, yet lovely. O daughter of Jerusalem, dark like the tents of mm. Peter, like the tent curtains of Solomon. Do not stare at me because I am dark. Because I am but, but, I, but oh, I understand, but what does that have to do with, with this program tonight? I mean, yes, you have to be straight nerves and fair skin. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think. I love my poor people because I sweat for them. So what you're saying? I am still not in government. So then. So there is no second chance. Okay. No second chance. But, for these people. but I. I but I guess you're taking no you're, you're taking out your frustration on the wrong people. No <laughs> I know, but you're taking out when your frustration. You have a chance, but when you know the truth, there mm. is All no right. second chance. All right. Good night. Um, good night. Thanks for calling. I I I I I am sorry. I, I I don't agree with the, the lady, and um, I know most of you were not around Hurricane Lois. I was around. I stayed here, and my children stayed here. Uh, I had two uh, girls at the time. The third one was born after that. We suffered along with everyone else. They could have gone to America, mm -hmm. but I kept them here. I wanted them to experience what it was like. Mm -hmm. But I think you all are pretty uh, realistic about your views about St. Martin. You oh, know? Yeah. I, I think you all are. But we mentioned that the last <laughs> I time. Know, you all are very I, I found open. it was funny. Like she, she was trying to somewhat say that we don't think there's poverty here, and, and we mentioned no, that. We, yeah, you don't we said it was not. It is That's not why that we want, in our face. We want a better St. Martin. Yeah. That's why we and say we want a better hunger. Yeah. We mentioned that the last yeah. time we were here. So I don't know, let, let me take a call for you. Oral Gibbs live and call. Hello. Good evening. Can you speak a little louder, sir, please? Yes, good evening. Good evening, sir. Um, I just want to say I'm very uh, positive and proud of these young people here this evening, and uh, I would encourage them to, to stay positive and stay focused. Uh, we are proud of you and do what you must do, and wish you and support you. Know, Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. But uh, what I want to add to that is just um, at the end, they, as a people, um, all of us, we, we can, I think we grew up with a mentality too, is that uh, you have to enter government. Only when you're in government mm -hmm. is when you reach it, and that's when you're able to mm -hmm. thrive. Mm -hmm. And I, I think maybe that's a problem too as to why we have so much uh, corruption because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the government is a, you know, the part of gold that where you're yeah. able to do so much of things. But um, um, what we, especially as young people, need to understand because you still have young people mm -hmm. say, yeah, I, I need to have a government job, but um, look towards. Yeah creating jobs um, yeah. towards becoming an entrepreneur. And, and I have a lot of friends that actually work in government who would also, thinking about the long run, they don't see themselves working in government in, for the rest of their lives. They also want to maybe come out of government and, and be an entrepreneur. So, yeah. it's, so we're seeing the reality of it that it's not all right. fairies yeah. and, and daisies. Right. Exactly. And, I, and I did that. And I, I worked for the government for 10 yeah. years, then I left. Yeah. And it was the best thing I ever did, but you know what? That ten-year experience that I had I you. I could you. not get that yeah. in any university. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. So I always tell young people: you have an opportunity to go and work for government, do it. You don't have to stay all no, your life, you like you said. No, you don't have to stay. Yeah. You know, and you and I don't. I don't plan to stay in government for the rest of my life either. So yeah. let's take some more calls for you. Oral Gibbs live and call. Hello. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Good question. Um, go ahead. Well, I am. I'm a part of the Leo, the Leo Club. Mm -hmm. And um, besides that, I also teach catechism at my church. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to do my own, mm -hmm. but it's not an organization. Mm -hmm. It's a project that I want to launch on my own. Well, I write for Tea Times. I'm involved in university, and I also host the university's radio show. St. Um, Martin Speaks on uh, night table where they be Saturday at 12. Mm -hmm. And I was also part of the Omega Leos, but I'm also looking to start my own foundation to kind of give uh, courses um, in different aspects of, um, of like social media courses that young people can benefit from and that 
you know, if they want to develop personally and enhance their resumes. So that's something I'm planning on doing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all the, <coughs> and you know, the thing is that um, Samoan is a unique place. Look, I love this place. I was born here, but mm -hmm. sometimes my own people will kick me down, you know, and I understand that. When you're young, uh, there's so much resistance to Sibrodid. I can look back at my time when I started this program in 1984. Had I listened to most people, I would not be here today. Yeah. So let me give you one recommendation, one little advice, and I hate to give people advice. I think this is the first time on my show I gave you some advice. <laughs> Don't listen to anybody else. Listen to yourself. Yeah. That's the key. You, know, you listen to other people, you know, you could, <laughs> well, let, let me refer, listen to them, but follow your own instinct, right. yeah. what you want. Yeah. 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 Do what's yeah. good for, yes, not, and yeah. without hurting anyone, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you could be distracted too by people. Let me take a call for you. Oral Gibbs Live and Caller. Hello? You there, Caller? Good evening. Good evening, the Honorable Dr. Lake. Do you good, uh, good evening, Dr. Resistors of this island, unfortunately, uh, are going to come from people uh, my age and up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's, it's sad yeah. because, you know, I, I really think that the future is what I'm seeing in front of me, you all. And we have to really work at making sure that there's possibilities and opportunities for all of you. And that will make this a stronger country. Uh, yes, it's, um, at the end of the day, we, uh, three of us, we have a lot of more young people, but. Um, uh, I'm speaking generally because yeah, of but, you uh, are here. Us yeah. three, you know, we have done what we can you know, in our capacity mm -hmm. to contribute yeah. to society. Yeah, so. exactly. And still doing what we can. Like, really. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. Want, yeah. and uh, want the best for Samaritan yes, at the end exactly. of the day. Exactly. That's why we're here. <laughs> not trying to leave out anybody. <laughs> but I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm happy that you all agreed to come in here and speak because you know, I think I learned something from listening to you all, and, and I know many people did. And we have to listen more to young people like you all because they're the future. So we're going to close off for us with uh, Ms. Dakov. And mm -hmm. anything you want to add in closing before we go? Um, no, I just thank you for inviting me on the show. Um, this is my first TV experience. and So you'll come back? Yes, I will. Oh, okay. I will. <laughs> I'm always willing to give back. And I love my country. I love St. Martin. And I want the best for it at the end of the day. No matter how old or young or, you know, foreigner, not foreigner. So. All right. So that's uh, it's Anissa Dakov, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Kanda? Well, um, thank you for having me on the show once again. I'd like to wish you and um, all the TV viewers a happy new and a prosperous year also. And um, I'll, you know, be con I'll be continuing doing what I do, contributing to society. Exactly. Despite whatever. All right. Mr. Ralph Kanda. And... Uh, Ramirez, Marjorie Ramirez. <laughs> yes. I want to thank you also for allowing us to be here one more time. And I would just like to encourage all the other youth to come out and to speak out and to be much more informed. There's a lot out there, and if you're not informed, that you, then you're not aware. Yeah. So thank you once again. Well, I want to thank you all for coming in. I want to wish all of you the best of health, wealth, and happiness for 2016 to all of you and your families. I'm happy to know that if you all are around mm -hmm. with the same head <laughs> on your body, 
same attitude and everything else, well, I don't have to worry when I become an old man, if I live to become an old man, mm -hmm. because then Simran will be in good hands, right? Yes. <laughs> well, well, thank you all again, and uh, much success to all of you, all right? Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And that's it for now. I'll see you next time. Till then, good night. Take care. Bye.